Hey, what's going on, Reason Gang? My name is MG The Future. Thank you for joining me on my channel today. Today's video, I will be using Reason 10, and I want to revisit some of my lo-fi hypotheses, or is it a hypothesis? Either way it goes, what I really wanted to do is show you guys how to make a lo-fi track from scratch with all the experience I've gained for the past few months. And in doing so using Reason 10, I'm gonna attempt to do so without any third-party plugins or REs, really. Um, so as long as you have Reason 10 and most of these effects I'm gonna show you, you should be able to lo-fi any sound, instrument, or drum break that you wish. And as I go along with it, I'll kind of give you some of the insights onto what I think is important to go into a modern lo-fi hip hop track. So let's start with just instrumentation. In this particular case, I'll be using the A-list guitars. You don't have to use this. You can use the radical piano. You can use your favorite synthesizer or maybe some of those 80s sounds that they have in the new layers instruments if you have any of those. When I think of lo-fi, some of the most captivating kinds is always the acoustic guitars or the live guitars. If you tune into lo-fi hip hop hashtag on Instagram, you'll be familiar with quite a few people who will sing live and play guitar and then those clips end up becoming samples later. So for this, I probably gonna do the Brit pop patch. And what's cool about A-list guitars, so I can play chords and the guitar will play that chord for me. But to make this job a little bit easier, I'm gonna implore the help of one of the players that come with Reason called Scales and Chords. This way I could play these chord progressions one key at a time. Also what I wanna do is kinda of change the scale as well, maybe Lydian, and then within Lydian to the key of D. D minor and all the derivatives of it have this very particular distinct sound when it comes to a lot of lo-fi jazzy minor music. It's one of my favorites. Now all I gotta think about is a progression. Now lo-fi hip hop today in a modern context is usually a much slower tempo. I recommend anything around the 80 beats per minute range. In this example, I'll be using 78 beats per minute. Now I'm gonna come up with a sequence with this A-list guitars. So something really simple like this, I'm gonna bring it back. I'm gonna loop this two bar section, but let's see what it sounds like. Now I could quantize it, but some of the beauty of lo-fi hip hop is you really don't have to. We can also bounce this to an audio file or audio clip and readjust the timing manually as well. My favorite technique is probably going to be to convert it to a nurse rex file and chop it up in Kong. So that way we don't even have to worry about the timing. Now that I have this acoustic guitar performance and for you, it could be a piano, an EP or a sample. What I wanna do is lo-fi it. And there's many ways to do this. This is just the way that I've gotten used to doing it. The first thing I'm gonna do is add the automatic retro transformer. And what this does will give us different emulations of VHS, vinyl, tape, which is very important, right? And most of the time people would stop there because they have the vinyl effect. But to make really convincing lo-fi hip hop, there's a few elements you have to emulate. Sample rate reduction, bit rate reduction, tape wobble emulates that. And then of course, if you can afford to, lifting a sample directly from vinyl. So I'm listing about four components we're gonna need. And the best way to manage this so you don't have to do this every time is just to make this a combinator. So I'll hit combine on the effect that was added to this guitar. Now when I finish my chain, I can save it as a preset. And this way you guys don't have to recreate it each time you make a lo-fi beat. Or if you end up having multiple instruments, you can use the same combinator and adjust the parameters separately. So I'm gonna stay with vinyl. I wanna bring down the dry and wet a little bit. And now that I have this texture, I wanna sample rate reduce it. And the best way to do that is with Scream. Scream for Distortion has a setting here at the bottom called Digital, and Digital will give us both the sample rate and bit reduction to some extent. I'm gonna turn damage down a little bit, and what I'm gonna do is adjust these two parameters here, little by little, until I get the kind of texture I want. Usually I have this turned all the way up. And my bit crunching, which is this knob, That graining issue here is very reminiscent of the SP-303. So I'm gonna cut some of these frequencies out a little bit. I wanna increase the master volume just a touch. Cool, so I got the vibe I like. Now what I wanna think about is, do I wanna smooth that out any, or do I wanna attack the wobble right away? What I'm probably gonna do is deal with the wobble first. And the best way to do that, of course, is with a stock effect called the echo. Now this is mostly associated with being a delay, and it is, but the delay itself, based on the model it's emulating, has a lot of cool glitch effects that it can do. So to pull that off, I'm gonna turn sync off, I'm gonna adjust the time to around nine o'clock or so, so between nine and 12, maybe 10 or 11. That's gonna give us a shorter delay time than the default. I'm gonna turn drive down 
around for now. We'll keep the envelope where it is for now. And the only two parameters I have to worry about is going to be the time interval and the wobble interval. Speaking of which, let me turn feedback off so it doesn't create any echo. Now, when this plays, I'm gonna adjust this wobble effect and you're gonna hear that lo-fi signature move, as I call it. So as you hear, as you adjust the wobble, it creates a different movement. So ideally you want to automate that in a, a more longer sequence or arrangement, and you can. You can even shortcut these to become rotaries or macros within the combinator itself. Since the rest, you probably wouldn't change nearly as much. The same thing happens with time. Watch when I increase the wobble and change the time as well. So automating the time variable just a little bit will give you some cool pitch down effects and other types of glitches you can have throughout your track. That part is up to you. In my personal experience, I like that effect, but I much rather just have the wobble be present, but not in the way. I don't want it to distract you from the vibe or the mood of the chords or the drums. But if you want to add the effect, you can right click and edit the automation later down the line. Now that I have these three key components, everything sounds kind of grainy. So I want to smooth it out with a filter. And believe it or not, we're going to use an instrument for that. That filter is by the name of Thor. Now this one gets a little bit tricky because we have to turn this around with our tab key and reroute the audio. So right now everything's being daisy chained all the way down effect module to effect module. And the outputs here, what I need to do is switch them to the inputs on Thor. And then the outputs on Thor I need to switch to the inputs here. We're good to go. Now when I turn it back around, you're still not going to hear anything because Thor hasn't been told how to deal with those inputs. So there's going to be no sound at all. So don't fret about that. We're going to do show programmer. We're going to go down to this modulation section and we're going to choose our sources, right? So audio input one, that's going to represent left and audio input two is going to represent right. And our destination is going to be filter three, left in, filter three, right in. And now we just got to increase the amount. We want 100% sent to the filter, which is going to be here. Now we hear it again. And now that we can hear it, we can go ahead and choose any of these four filters that we want. I'm going to turn this click track off and just adjust these frequencies. Now, when you filter it, you could do it to your own taste. But me knowing some of the hardware modules, such as my SP404 and others, I know that the frequency cutoff on a lot of them is between 10K and 12K. So I like to deal with this frequency knob between those ranges. As you can see, there's a readout. So right here is around 15, around here is around 11. So I'm gonna keep it there, play this through and go through the different types of filters. You could drive it if you want. You can change the shape. But for this demonstration, I would stick to low pass. That's a cool effect too. Cool. So low pass ladder seems to be the best cut for this job. So it's a really cool sound. And like I said, you can go back through here, pick different modules and adjust it however you want. But at this particular point in the setup with these four modules, I'm gonna go ahead and save this. I'm gonna save it to my desktop for now. I'm gonna call it MG Lo-Fi Rig. This way I can call it back up as many times as I want in the future. I don't have to worry about where the wires go because it's already set. Now that I have this arrangement, I did mention automating this would be very useful for the effect of convincing it's lo-fi. Not just the distortion, but the actual movement of the sound. So I'm right click, go to edit automation, that'll pull up our sequencer. And you see wobble is highlighted here with the echo. So what I wanna do is double click in here, create a clip, double click in it again, use our pencil tool, and what I want to try to do is keep that variable, what looks like it's around nine o'clock, consistent throughout it. And then as it plays, adjust it just a little bit and see what kind of cool effects we can get. I could change to this cursor tool instead and bring this down.
So something like that. I could probably spend this whole session adjusting different micro points all the way through the beat. But in this kind of context, I might not be able to, especially if I'm adjusting this, because you're gonna notice when I turn the click track back on, it loses track of the downbeats. So now the sample kind of starts, like there's a delay. For that reason, and in this context, I would actually convert this to an audio clip. So I'm gonna right click on my guitar part, which is MIDI, I'm gonna bounce in place, and now I have it as audio file. And as you can see, if we zoom in on this, that's a great big <laughs> quarter of a beat shifted to the right. And I'll throw your whole program off. So it muted the previous MIDI track that helped us create this performance, but now we're not gonna be using it. Now we're gonna be working with audio. Same thing with this echo here. We're not gonna be hearing that no more because this audio track is its own thing. So let me go ahead and rename this, just guitar parentheses lo-fi. So let me double click on it to bring up the edits and slice modes. I'm gonna select this slice here where my actual beat begins. And I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna split it slices. I'm gonna remove this piece with my delete key, bring it back to the top, switch my snap so I can move it and then adjust this. And now I'm gonna play it. So my MIDI performance is muted so we should only hear the audio clip. Now it's back on beat again. So that's really useful. Now you could do a myriad of things. You could double click it again, right click, and you can bounce it to a rec loop and chop it up with Kong, as I've done in a previous video, using chunk trig to create random chops. In fact, we might do that. But before I do, let me reuse this performance of the MIDI at least on a different sound. Usually with guitar lo-fi tracks, I would say you could use any synthesizer that you wish or an EP of the sorts. I'm gonna see what we have here that'd be cool. Maybe Humana Vox, maybe some kind of creepy choir sound. <laughs> I don't know. Before I pick a preset, I'm gonna go to my players and I'm gonna set it to the same D Lydian. I'm gonna increase the notes here as well, but I might adjust the flavor in a moment. Now on the presets for this, let's go to a female choir. Let's call this choir so we know what we're dealing with. Let's unmute this track. Let's see how this sounds together. Sounds creepy enough to me. Now we gotta bring our effect in. So let's see. Let's go to desktop. Let's bring in our lo-fi rig right under that. Let's expand it and let's change these parameters for this sound. And as you can hear, because I adjusted the warble, it's no longer in sync with the guitar. So I'm right click this one, bounce in place. So I'm only looking at the audio clips. I'm gonna double click this one, which is our choir. I'm gonna right click it again, split it, slices, delete, shift it back. And as you can see, this particular step with the choir, converting it into a lo-fi piece only took seconds this time because our rig was already created. And that's the power and beauty of Combinator, being able to store many of those effects in one unit. So now I'm good to go. Now I can play these together, everything should be in time. The automation's not triggering anything because nothing's assigned to it. But let's see how it sounds. Very, very cool. So that's just a lo-fi essence. Now I wanna add some drums real quick so you can hear this in context. All right, so I have re drum and I have a basic kick, hi-hat and snare. And I could program it with re drum and use its step sequencer, or I could use one of the other players called Drum Sequencer, which is a new update for Reason. I believe it's still free in the Reason shop and you have to download it separately. So now I could trigger re drum from here and now I get probability and different repeats and effects, which is really cool. Now I'm gonna play it in context with the guitar and choir. And then at the top of this drum sequencer player, I'm gonna go ahead and hit send to track. This will automatically disable the auto run for this. And as you can see in the MIDI notes, the probability and random variations is now printed. So let's start from the top and let it rip.
Now the best thing about lo-fi hip hop is the groove. So once I take it out of the drum sequencer, I'm gonna add one more feature from Reason, which is the groove engine. So I'm gonna set this to A1, click on groove at the bottom here, and where A1 is this slot here, I'm gonna go to presets, factory sounds, regroove patches, vinyl, and these are all kind of based on or influenced by drum breaks. So let's try president and let's see how that sounds. What about this one? And you can hear the pull on this one. Increase the shuffle a little bit, slide it, and then decrease the, the wet amount. Lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and deal with the mixer. I have decent levels. I'm gonna turn on the SSL bus comp, uh, slow attack, auto release, and adjust the threshold for about four to six dB reduction. Increase the makeup gain. And we see where the guitar is dominating a lot of the lower frequency. So open up the mixer, enable these filters, and then have more control over that. That's how I deal with lo-fi when using Reason 10, but nothing but stock effects. I'm MG Future. Thank you for joining me today. Any comments, questions, or concerns, definitely leave them in the box below. Until next time, peace.